Who hides in a bakery at Christmas time? A mince spy. All right, then the final part of the uh, second paper in uh, geography is a bit of a tricky bit, actually. Um, there is one set of questions that could be on a mixture of food, water and energy. Um, and you will have to complete that section. And then after that, you also have to pick an additional option, one out of three, either food, water or energy. This video is only section one. This is the uh, questions that you have to do. Um, I'll do the uh, second options part, if you like, in a separate video. All right then, um, so these questions, like I've said previously, are the ones you've got to do. So let's have a little look what we're being asked to do. Uh, study figure nine. Okie dokie, a map showing world oil consumption. What is the difference? We don't want a similarity, we need a difference uh, between Africa and North America's share of oil consumption. Well, um, North America is 24, Africa is 4, so you could say uh, North America is 20% larger, or you could alternatively say uh, 6 times bigger would also be acceptable. Either of those answers will do. And the way I've worked that out is simply by counting the squares. It's not a particularly difficult question obviously as shown in figure nine okay then question 3.2 using figure nine which means you have to use figure nine and your own understanding you're gonna to have to do some sort of explanation yourself suggest which means come up with something inequalities meaning differences consumption meaning the use of resources meaning something you can use and how they influence well-being in terms of well-being, um, it's the examiner's code for quality of life there, and it means you're going to need to talk about uh, comfort, access, privacy, or safety to make your point clear. So let's read back through that question. Using figure nine, come up with a reason why differences in the use of resources influences quality of life. So the resource in figure nine is oil. You're going to have to talk about oil to make your point here. So... How can consuming more oil give you a either higher or lower quality of life? Okay, then, um, probably makes more sense to consider the higher quality of life for this. So the easiest way to get these marks are identifying that, for example, in uh, North America or the Asia Pacific, they have the largest uh, amount of oil consumed. If I take North America as my example, 24% uh, of world oil consumption. That therefore means that there is uh, more oil available. It therefore means people uh, have more likelihood of being able to use um, petrol within a car, which also therefore means that they get um, uh, to places faster. And essentially we're just using the so what rule here. What it means is more oil is available, so uh, more oil can be used in cars, so more uh, petrol available if you like, so uh, people can travel further, uh, faster, so they have greater access to opportunities, uh, e.g., I don't know, going to work or e.g. going to spend time with the family so therefore a higher quality of life um i would avoid on this one i try and identify that a high use of oil could alternatively mean uh, like the negative of like the enhanced greenhouse effect or something like that because it's a bit too far-fetched we can certainly do it the other way around as a negative because it doesn't say it has to be a positive so if we were to talk about africa there with only four percent of world oil consumption that therefore means it's less available therefore means it's more expensive it therefore means um it's uh, more expensive to travel to places you've got less petrol so therefore it'll also be slower to travel to places that means you have less access to opportunities because you're losing your leisure time and that therefore means um a lower quality of life the access to opportunity there could be um i don't know uh, seeing the family or um, collecting more water, whatever it might be, but make sure you always give that example. So an easy three marks there, it's a point using the figure and a so, and this means that linking to comfort, access, privacy, or safety. All right then, um, question 3.3, outline, which means briefly explain, you're gonna have to use the so what rule here. One, which means one, advantage is a positive, the trend towards is like the movement towards or the pattern towards agribusiness, right? Agribusiness is the um, is the tricky part of this question. If you don't know what that word means, you can't answer the question. It essentially means the, the movement of agriculture towards a business, towards um, growing as many crops as possible for a profit uh, and to make the entire system more professional. Um, so essentially the, the question really here is asking what are the positives of agriculture turning into a more 
streamline modern business. Uh, and really importantly, it does also say there in the UK. So this outline our advantages. Um, the biggest advantage probably is the fact that it's a more modernized, more professional uh, setup. What that will mean is a uh, larger field. It will also mean greater use of um, uh, fertilizers and technology. What does all that mean for people? Well, what it means quite simply is that more food will be produced. So uh, food prices will become cheaper in the UK. So uh, people have more disposable income and that therefore means they can spend in their local economy. So I've probably done too much there for, for two marks, but the concept being that more food will be produced so food will become cheaper on the open market and that therefore means um businesses will earn uh, sorry not business what should i say uh food will be cheaper so people will have more disposable income they can obviously spend in the local economy right probably the the most tricky question for you guys in this ppe was this question because we've studied water and food uh, and just bad luck really that the six marker in the first year through was actually on energy so let's have a little look through this question using figure 10 which is obviously the whole graph there to the left hand side and your own understanding which means of course you're going to have to put something in yourself you're going to have to explain this yourself discuss which means give positives and negatives the issues arising so what happens as a result of the UK's changing energy mix. So it's a six marker, so just as a reminder, there's your six mark advice. You're gonna need two peels. You're gonna have to use the figure or a case study to evidence. In this case, obviously, it's the figure more than a case study. And if you don't use the figure or a case study, you will score a maximum of two marks. So you must use the figure. Be specific, it's a graph, so use the figures. So how will we go about answering this question? Well, hopefully, um, the most obvious thing that appears to you lot is that there are changes. You could pick on any of these changes, e.g. the coal reducing or the oil in, uh, decreasing, I should say, or the gas increasing or nuclear increasing, or actually all of the um, uh, renewables increasing as well. So take your time with the graph. Don't just look at the biggest bar first. Look at the, the general trends. So if I were to answer this question, I would have my first point would be uh, the increased use of renewables and I try and work out what are the positives and negatives of this well if you're increasing the use of renewables that means that your energy supply will probably be less reliable so if we took wind uh, um, <clears throat> wind and solar onshore and wind offshore as our example we can see an increase there of 8% uh, in wind and solar offshore and actually um, a 5% increase but actually from 0 to 5% for wind offshore I would try and identify to the examiner that uh, wind is less reliable than coal because at times, particularly in summer and the anti-cyclone months, um, there simply isn't very much wind in the UK at times and therefore you're going to reduce the um, reliability of your energy, energy supply as the turbine itself w won't be turning. That therefore means, I mean, well, it's the issues of that. It might mean um, less electricity available. It might mean um, increased prices, for example. Those are some of the issues you can then start to discuss on the grounds that there is um, uh, less disposable income for, for the population, as an example. However, you can also flip that and say the increase in renewables is also a real positive uh, on the grounds that um, it creates job opportunities for um, your highly skilled engineers, technicians, etc. to go and build these offshore um, wind ramps or wind, um, wind ramps, what I'm saying, wind turbines and also the solar as well. So you get like two ideas from that. You can either say the positive, which is those increased economic activity, or the negative of reduced... Um, uh, supply of energy uh, particularly in summer months for wind another point you could make there is um, it's unesthetically pleasing in some people's opinion to have wind turbines up on hills you could use grand pound there as a little example to be specific so point number two I'd make there is the decrease in coal and it links to your original point there that actually it means that your um, energy supply becomes less reliable coal is quite a well-known finite resource you burn it you are going to be able to turn a turbine and as a result if you decrease that um use of coal it therefore means that actually you you've lost that idea so if you're going to use wind it becomes less reliable the other point with coal is going to be that you're going to lose jobs in those coal mining areas because coal will be less demanded i mean you might see it's very very similar points to the increase in renewables here that actually there is a real uh, link between the two that the issues are, are essentially the same reliability of, of energy and also jobs lost or gained 
The other one you could make, and some of you tried to do this, was um, the reduction in coal is a positive for the environment on the grounds that less um, carbon emissions will be released. Therefore, um, you can reduce uh, the effects of global warming. And because we're discussing the issues of that, we could therefore identify, for example, Mevagizzi or, for example, Charlestown and identify that uh, house prices in the area won't be affected by a rising sea level. You won't have to pay for more sea defences. So those are sort of the issues you can discuss. Just use the so what rule as you're going through it. Hopefully all that makes sense. Uh, come and see us down in H8 if anything is not too uh, clear on that video.